to derive density of states in nanostructures, uh, we would need to modify a dispersion relation by um, assuming that some of the dimensions becomes nano and um, nanoscale. And, uh, and so we start with a two-dimensional case in a 2D in a 2D case. Um, the dispersion relation is the following. So it's again the sum of the contributions from all the, the dimensions. And uh, we assume that X and Y remain macroscopic and the Z direction, uh, Z dimension becomes the mm, nano sized. And uh, so again, using a free particle picture, we will have um, h bar square kx square over 2m for x, h bar square ky square over 2m for y, and then we have a quantized solution for z direction. So n square h bar square pi square over l z square or 2m. And you can use nz, the index here. And so to calculate density of states, counting the z modes is actually straightforward. You just count them one by one because they are they are more or less quantized. So just to just to mm, hi, highlight what is what this dispersion relation looks like. So you will have um, so this is let's say kx ky, and along this direction will be will be energy, and um, so X and Y remain a free particle model and Z will give you the offset value, right? So for, for N Z equals one, you will have some uh, offset energy. You will be your ground state here. So E1. And then it disperses para parabolic uh, as a parabola in the KX, KY direction. So you will have this kind of uh, a parabolic dispersions going in the, um, with kx, ky, the energy grows. And then you will have at some other uh, distance, you will have e2, and you will have another set of, another parabola going up, and so on. And then later, another parabola. Um, and uh, again, if we, are, if we are talking about the case space, the x and y modes, they will be spaced regularly, the same what we what we saw in this three-dimensional case. And the separation between those states um, again is uh, is the same. So d k x equals pi over l x. D k y equals pi over l y. It's a very small value because l x and, and l y they are they are macroscopic. They are very large. So this delta k is uh, x and x and y, they are very small. And then the area occupied by one state in a k space per k state will be delta k squared. That is your know, delta kx, I'm just explicitly writing delta ky, is uh, pi over lx, pi over ly, and that's pi squared over the area um, of that material, uh, two-dimensional material. And the number number of states available for a given magnitude of the wave vector is uh, will be now done, again, an analogy with the three-dimensional case, by constructing a ring of uh, some radius, um, k, um, where k is the wave vector, and the thickness of dk, rather than a spherical shell from the 3D case. Everything else remains the same, and then the the factor of one four will will come from the equivalent nature of the plus minus states, exactly same what was for one eight factor in the three dimensional case. So the area the area of the ring is uh, two pi k d k, and the number of um, k space states in the ring is uh, then. U of k, k is a over pi squared times uh, two pi k d k times two spin states, and then divided by so divided by the four equivalent states. 
because of the sign uh, properties of the wave function. And then if you, then there will be lots of cancellations. The pi's are cancelled. The it's two and fours uh, going going around. You have two cancel, two cancel, four cancel. No, the pi's cancel. So you will have a over pi k dk. Again, you would like to express these density of states in terms of energy. And we can do it by using dispersion relation in two dimensions, which is, and then we rewrite it again. This will be h bar square pi square nz squared over 2m lz squared. You can call this one as the enz plus then these parab par parabolas uh, or paraboloids h bar squared kx squared plus ky squared over 2m. So the n here is 1, 2 and so on, integer numbers. And then if we use these polar coordinates instead of Cartesian, your k squared and polar is the same or is as kx squared plus ky squared in a Cartesian. And the dispersion relation, I'm finally putting all things together, e equals e minus e and z, so we just put these constant terms, will be now h bar square k square over 2m. That's a dispersion relation, and that's our density of states. So we have all the ingredients then to derive um, the, the values. So first we need to express again this uh, k in terms of energy. The k is uh, uh, a square root of e minus e and z, 2m divided by h bar squared. Then we're taking the derivative of this one. Decay is uh, using the chain rule as one, one half uh, times e minus e and z 2m over h bar squared minus one half times the derivative of what's inside 2m over h bar squared de. Um, the two cancel here and here. And now the k dk is uh, basically it's yeah there are lots of cancellations here as well because once you multiply multiply this one um, multiply k by dk these bits cancel. And you end up with m h bar or h bar squared d e. So for each um, n z level, for each of the n z, each of n z, we will have g of k d k will be a over pi m over h bar squared d. E. And then the g of e. D per unitary again, so we can remove this a from from the remove the a from the consideration is m d e over pi h bar squared. It's quite a phenomenal result because now um, the density of states actually is independent of energy. It's a quite a quite a surprising quite a surprising result, and let me try to summarize it graphically as well. So now we have uh, lots of these n z states, and uh, for each of the n z state, I can write down this g sub n z of uh, e d e is uh, m over h bar square pi. And then we can use a sort of a theta function to have these independent values of density of states. So the heaviside step function, 
uh, e minus e and z d e so that's the the expression and then you can plot it we have here energy and here is the g of e and um, so at zero at zero energy there's not there are no states at some point you will have uh, at some energy which is e and z where this um, this starts you will have a step and the value of density of states will be now uh, m over m over pi m over pi h bar squared and um, so we have lots of subbands then for in a general case you can write it down in a general case g of e d is uh, m h bar pi h bar square pi and then you sum all these subbands summing by n z of these thetas E minus E and Z D E. And graphically it can be also uh, represented here. This is energy and this is a density of states. So you will have somewhere you will have E1, E Z, E and Z equal one, some E2 here. They're not equidistant again, so this is E3 and so on. And you will have um, steps of like doubling this uh, this height and so on. So this will be a, a density of states in two dimensions. It looks something like this, and a three-dimensional case is kind of like enveloping it. So this is this is a three D dispersion relation, and this is a two-dimensional case. <clears throat> 